Why should you try Throne in Liberty? Throne in Liberty, first and foremost, is probably the prettiest MMO I've ever played compared to how well it runs. I have, I don't know what they put in this game, but it runs at very high frames, pretty much regardless of what's going on on the screen. It has 0.2 second load times. The only instances in the game are within a few isolated instance dungeons that you do. And there's plenty of open world dungeons that don't have any of that. Throne of Liberty also does a couple of unique things. You're, you're not going to find any mounts per se in the game. So I, I feel bad for you guys from World of Warcraft. There won't be any real mount chasing. But instead, what you will have is shape shifting that you will chase different cosmetic forms for. There's even some shape shifts in the game that aren't related to your movement abilities. And those are more for being incognito and hiding in a mob spawn and jumping people from. Uh, we'll go into that in a later video, but I, initially I think a lot of people don't like the shape shifting. And what I can tell you is that it has a lot of depth to it. It's very smooth and I think it just adds to the game. So insert stupid, dumbass, furry comment, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. The shape shifting's good. Stop being a dinosaur. Get over it. The combat is probably one of Throne of Liberty's not as strong suits. It's still a positive for me because it's better than average MMO combat. I think the important thing to remember when you're playing Throne of Liberty's combat is it came from auto battling, standstill, no movement while using your abilities in three months, pretty much to what we have now. The other thing is that as your gear gets better, your character gets further in progression, the abilities do more damage, they get snappier, they get tighter. You, and they're also giving us a skill expression thing that's coming with the global release, and that's gonna change how abilities just work in general. So the combat is something they're they're aware of that isn't their strong suit, and I think they're constantly trying to work on it. And, and I'd like to give these devs a shot and, and show us what they're working with because the things they do make in this game are very, very impressive. One of the major selling points of the game is that it's completely free. Uh, and what I would personally deem as a fair monetization uh, regarding free replay, uh, at least. What I mean by that is you can play the game for free and you're not locked from any content from anyone else who's paying. The, the main difference is that if people are swiping, they can get gear a bit quicker than you off the auction house. They're, they're gonna have a battle pass that's giving them extra materials, so on and so forth. But, those are definitely things if you're a very competitive gamer, I think you should do. But if you're OK with not being at the front of the pack, the free to play is an awesome way to play the game. And you're not going to really feel like you're missing out on anything or, you know, it, there, there's certain monetization that there's just so many convenience items you need to, to play the game a la BDO. This game just doesn't have that. And it has an auction house where people can sell items for the cash shop currency and vice versa so you know that that'll play out whatever way it's going to play out and i wish that wasn't integrated in the game but it is a core part of the game and it's how all the systems are integrated so there's just no real way they can remove it as it stands right now anyway while i do think everyone should try throne in liberty and i think it's a very impressive game and i'm, I'm going to go very hard on it with our community at launch i don't think throne in liberty is going to do very well in the long run with the mmo market I think that mostly comes down to how it's designed and the way they're doing their development. Throne is first and foremost a group PvP focused endgame. While you're going to spend the majority of your time PvEing, the, the goal for all of that PvE should be the PvP. Uh, this is something I personally enjoy because I come from PvP focused MMOs, but I understand that that's a dated idea and thought process. I, I'm just not sure it's going to jive with newer gamers, especially people that are, you know, playing the major theme park MMOs like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 14. Uh, the last PvP focused non full loot MMO we had that came out in recent memory, I think was Crowfall like three years ago and it's completely dead. There's no chance of it ever coming back as far as I can tell. And PVP, PVP focused end games just don't do well it, from what I've seen. And it's unfortunate because it's one of my favorite genres, but it's, it's, it's kind of fading in my opinion. So Throne of Liberty is hearkening back to Lineage 2, which is obviously they developed that game as well. And that game had a big PVE grind, but also a PVP focused end game. Also, Throne has failed on giving diverse types of content that are not related to PVP or farming mobs. I, 
you know, we're, we're getting fishing, alchemy, cooking at global release, but this is something they should have been working on a long time ago. It should have been baked into the game. Uh, the crafting system in the game to me really isn't crafting. It's more just you get materials from doing the stuff you're going to do anyway, and then you just hammer it into each other and make gear, or, you know, fish for traits and then pull those traits and put them on other gear. It's I don't mind it, but if I was if I was crafting focused, it would feel not like a crafting system. As far as I know, there's no real housing system. There's an inn that you can go to. And, and so far, I've seen not a lot of functionality re regarding that. I, I think they could have worked on some naval content and boating stuff. You, you got to keep in mind, Throne of Liberty has been developed for 12 years, obviously not by the same people the whole time. But, you know, we, it's what I would consider in dev hell on some level or was anyway. I think they've really brought the game to together and, and they've made a great game but the fact is is that throne and liberty is not doing great in the korean market and another thing that i really don't like that reminds me of bdo is that the devs of throne and liberty have said that while they're willing to change things the game is going to the global release is going to match the korean version of the game they're not going to be different versions of the game the only real difference is that the global release is going to be a little bit behind the Korean version in development, which gets us into that whole weird thing where we're looking at the Korean test servers to see what's coming down the pipeline and blah, blah, blah. I, I do think the global release is going to have way more players than the Korean version ever had. And I think they should really not focus on the Korean version of the game and more so focus on the global population. And that's not because I'm against you know the the way they de develop games for that customer base but i think what the global population wants from throne of liberty is going to be different than what the korean market wants uh there, there's too much pvp in the in, per, per the korean market for throne of liberty and there's not enough pay to win and you know i i think the western uh consumer base would probably argue against both those points they want we want more pvp uh we want less pay to win and we probably want more small scale, more way more life scaling things to do, houses to decorate, just a lot more fluff, you know? So uh, where I think Throne of Liberty is really gonna find a home with is people that play BDO that are tired of BDO, people that, uh, you know, since Arcade shut down are from Arcade, people from New World who are sick of New World that are, you know, PVPers. I, I think there's enough overlap in a lot of these communities that Throne of Liberty has a really solid chance of having a very solid player base that plays for a long time. I just don't really see it putting a dent in anything like WoW or Final Fantasy XIV because there's just not enough diverse stuff to do. Is really what it comes down to, you know. But you're gonna be, you're gonna be grinding mobs and hopefully fighting people when you're done grinding mobs a little bit. That's. <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of the TLDR for Throne of Liberty, but I think the the mob grinding is great. I think the environments are for phenomenal. I think the game runs super well. I like that it has PvP as a focus because we don't really get that anymore. And I, I hope the devs listen to the community, and I hope they change the game more so for the global version. I, I would like to see them remove even more of the monetization pay to win stuff or you know delineate it a bit so it doesn't matter as much we are getting something with a global release that is supposed to you're going to be able to use a currency to reroll traits on gear that removes a large portion of the pay to win i won't go in depth in that canon has a video on it i believe that it's probably going to explain it better but yeah they're, they're already making efforts to to globalize the game a bit regardless of the global release and, and i can appreciate that but for PVPers like me personally, I want to see less Zerg v Zerg, more, more small scale PVP. I want to see more AOEs so we can fight out numbered easier or at least have the option to. And I would like to see more skill expression with the abilities, a little more back and forth and counter play. That's a big thing to me, you know, when I've been practicing a couple builds on the beta and I played the Korean version and yeah, you kind of, if you're a melee build you have your engage and a cc and if they counter it you're kind of you're there, there's not a lot there to go off of so a lot of people are ranged and 
I think the meta is a little unbalanced right now, but again, what we're playing is not what we're getting at the global release. So who knows how it's going to shake out? Um, in closing, I would just like to say that we don't get a lot of MMOs that are made this well lately. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've played a well-made MMO. And regardless of me thinking that the game's not going to be super popular or anything like that, I urge, urge, urge everyone to give it a shot. It's free to play. It's coming out September 17th. If you want to play with the early access servers for five days, it's 40 bucks, which is, you know, I'm looking at it as buying the game. And if you don't want to, you can just wait five days, play for free, and there'll be new servers opened up for the free to play players. And you could even transfer into the, the early access servers later if you want to. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to do really well initially. And I, I just, I hope I'm a little wrong. And I hope that it has more staying power than I see right now. But we're going to be making more Throne of Liberty content on the channel. So if you like what you saw in the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think I did bad. Let me know what you think I did well. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much, guys.